Hey there guys, it's Liz here. Happy Monday. I just wanted to hop on very briefly and kick off this Monday with a training telling you guys, explaining to you guys, reminding you guys why you cannot rely solely on the scale to assess your progress. And I think it's very fitting because my fourth round of the seven day reset is starting today. If you guys don't have the information on the reset and you want it, go ahead and comment reset below and I'm more than happy to give it to you. Hey Nikki, thanks for hopping on love. But this is a question that comes up whether somebody's in my seven day reset or there's somebody that is trying to reach a health fitness weight loss goal and they're thinking like, you know what, I've heard that you can't just rely on the scale. Maybe they've heard my hashtag F the scale movement or you know, you hear, oh, muscle weighs more than fat so don't worry about the number. But it's hard, right? It's hard to not care about that number. This is coming from somebody that used to be obsessed with the scale. Guys, do me a favor and whatever you use to assess your progress, I want you to put it in the comments. Of course somebody calls me in the middle of that. I want you to tell me and put in the comments, what do you use to assess your progress? Are you using uh, pictures? Are you using measurements? Are you doing maybe like a bioelectrical impedance or like an in-body scanner that you can go to the gym and you know you hold on to something or you stand through something and it sends that electrical impedance through, through your feet, through your body? Um, are you using the scale? Do me a favor, let me know. Maybe you do like, maybe you've done underwater weighing or you have the bod pod. There are so many things out there to be able to assess your body composition and your progress. But I've always been somebody that was obsessed with the scale up until probably about four or five years ago. And so I want to remind you, because I feel like we all need it every once in a while, to remind you of why you can't rely solely on that. It's very difficult when it's constantly being crammed down our throats that this number matters so much, right? And it doesn't mean that you can't celebrate those victories. I wanna make that really clear. It doesn't mean that if you know I have somebody go and post in my seven day reset group, hey, like I lost you know five pounds this week or I have clients lose anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds, some of them, depending on how much inflammation and, and gook they have in their body and toxins that they have, but What's more valuable to me is seeing pictures and measurements, okay? But I need to remind you guys of the things that are affecting this number on the scale. It's extremely important. I know that uh, Pat just commented and said that the mirror, that's exactly what, exactly, that's exactly how I feel, Patrick. He says the mirror is what tells you what you look like, not the scale, right? And it, this is and my exact point is that we look at the number on the scale and I need you guys to ask yourself this question is why are you looking at that number? Because we may say to ourselves, I have many of my clients, I'll be going through consultations or even during the seven day reset, I'll say, hey, what's your goal? And somebody will say, you know, maybe in a, in a week, they wanna lose 15 pounds, 20 pounds. In a month, somebody wants to lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds. It could be anything. So say somebody starts at 200 pounds and at the end of May, they get down to 175. If you don't look any different, and your clothes don't fit any different, like Tanner just said, how loose his clothing clothing fits is what he uses to assess it. And nobody at work or no one at the gym is saying, hey, like looks like you lost weight or maybe you like, you're expecting to go to a picnic and or a wedding and you think someone's gonna say, hey, like your arms look slimmer or your shoulders look more you know, defined or you're hoping you're gonna get these compliments, but you don't look any different, you don't feel any different, but the number on the scale goes down by 25 pounds. Then how much weight does that really carry? How much weight does that number on the scale really make a difference? Like it, it, it doesn't. And so that's what I'm trying to point out to you guys is that even though we want to be able to see those small minute changes in the scale, that's not what we need to be looking at because here's what can affect that number on the scale. First of all, guys, your water retention can change from so many different variables. So I want you to think about this hormone levels. It doesn't matter whether you're a male or a female, a female that's going through her menstrual cycle, about to go through her cycle, um, a woman that is pre peri or post menopausal, somebody that is stressed out because cortisol levels, cortisol that's high will cause you to retain more water. Guys, so many hormones can affect water retention. Then you have the fact that maybe you start exercising more or lifting. I have some people say to me, hey, you know, they started this new health and fitness regimen and maybe they expected to lose a lot more weight in the first week or two, but I have to explain to them, I'm like, listen, you just started a fitness regimen and your muscles 
are made up of about 70% water. So when you're using them more, especially your lower body muscles, you're going to retain more water. You need that for your muscles to survive, to, you know, improve performance. So you guys have to think about that. It doesn't mean that it's not going to still mess with you mentally a little bit, but when you understand the reasons why you retain more water or why the number on the scale may not go down as much as your inches or why the number on the scale may not move at all, but it seems like your clothes are fitting differently and it, people are telling you you look different and you don't feel like you have that hangover, not drinking hangover, but the hangover of the jeans, the hangover muffin top, the hangover of your bra or whatever, you'll understand why maybe those numbers don't seem to line up, right? So that's why you have to look at what water retention is going to affect that. Then you have to look at, guys, muscle, not just weighing more than fat, but at the same time that you're losing fat, you can also be building lean muscle mass. So of course, that's going to outweigh what you're losing in fat. And then you also have to think, for those of you guys that weigh yourself several times a day, <laughs> you do not have to point yourselves out or comment below, but I have many of my clients that are like guilty, like I weigh myself at least twice, if not three times a day. I've had clients that weigh themselves nine or 10 times a day. And I'm like, one bowel movement. <laughs> can literally help you lose two to three pounds. Not even kidding. Like, and so you have to think, if you haven't taken a poop, don't weigh yourself. Like, this is the difference between someone weighing themselves right when they wake up in the morning or weighing themselves at the end of the day. Or somebody that's weighing themselves right after they have a cheat meal or the morning after they have a cheat meal or a night of drinking versus somebody that is doing it after having a good four to five days of clean eating. Does that make sense, guys? So your salt consumption, your carbohydrate or sugar consumption, your alcohol consumption, your crappy sleep that's affecting your hormone levels, all of these things will cause your weight to fluctuate. And so this is why you have to look at inches lost. You have to look at, like, take one pair of pants and see how your body fits in them over the next several weeks. Make sure that they are washed the same. I will tell you that one of my seven day resetters was like, you know, I realized I was using a pair of pants to assess how much progress I was making, but she had worn the jeans a couple of times before she put them on uh, the first time that she wore them. And then the next time that she wore them, she had just washed and dried them. So just remember that the stuff stretches out. So you have to make sure if you're using clothes to assess, make sure that you just washed and dried or treated it the same way all the different times that you're putting it on. It's important guys, because if you're using this to assess your progress, you have to make sure that you're controlling as many variables as possible. Weigh yourself, measure yourself, take these pictures at the same exact time, the same time of the week, the same, you know, try and do it the same, you know, time of the month. If you're really trying to compare females, do not do it the week of your cycle and then do it two weeks later. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. This is why you cannot rely solely on the scale. I don't care if you want to use it as a form of measurement, you absolutely can, but don't use it as your only form of measurement. I see Miss Kelsey hopped on and we had a good long conversation about this and I was like, don't come to me and tell me that you, you know, didn't lose this weight or that weight this week because I want to see your pictures first and your measurements. And then if you want to talk about weight, then we'll talk about it. And now she knows. And sometimes it's just taking, takes a little bit of ingraining that in because that's all society tells us to do is look at the number on the scale. And wouldn't you rather be able to tell in the mirror? Wouldn't you rather be able to see, hey, yeah, I look skinnier versus, it's not like you're putting the number that you weigh on a piece of paper. Oh, I weigh 195 instead of 205. And you're walking around like, hey guys, I weigh 195 today. Are you going to applaud for me? Like, no, people are going to give you compliments and more likely to say something and you're going to feel better when you don't feel like you have rolls hanging over your pants or when they see that you look slimmer. They don't care if you're going to walk around with a post-it note on your head with the number of your weight. It only goes so far, okay? So I hope that I got you guys to break through a little bit of this mindset. I know that Amber said, so true, I fluctuate three to six pounds on any given day. Yes, females, absolutely. And Rachel just said, the scale only tells me how many sushi rolls I'm gonna stuff my face with tonight. Yes, my love. And you look fabulous, by the way, but I know you are so good with progress pictures on top of using the scale. So hopefully I got some of you guys to start thinking about other ways to be able to assess your progress without just feeling like, your weight needs to be your name tag on the front of your chest and that's the only way that you can define yourself and assess your progress and see how far you've come. Mwah. Love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Monday and kick ass the rest of the week.